good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Royal Institute of British Architects. Uh, my name is David Gloucester, and as RIBA Director of Education, I'm delighted to welcome you to the President's Medal Ceremony, the RIBA's annual celebration of architectural education and research. Uh, we're here tonight to celebrate achievement by students, teachers, and practitioners at all stages of the architectural profession, from undergraduate to postgraduate, and in academic and professional research. To tell you a little more about tonight's awards and their importance to the RIBA, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming to the stage the president of the RIBA, Jane Duncan. Thank you very much, David. Ladies and gentlemen, as someone who firmly believes in the importance of rewarding education and the role that architects and architecture plays in the creation of better public spaces and communities, I am truly delighted to host tonight's ceremony. Well, we'll start by announcing the winners of the RIBA President's Awards for Research, and we'll reveal the winner of the inaugural RIBA Research Medal. These awards, which this year celebrate their 10th anniversary, recognize excellence in the work produced by masters and PhD students, academics and practitioners, and highlight the need within the profession for strategic and innovative thinking. We will then announce this year's winners of the President's Medals in three different categories. The Bronze Medal for the best design project produced during part one, the Silver Medal for the best project submitted for part two, and the Dissertation Medal for the best written work submitted either at part one or part two, as well as the winners of the Sargent Awards for Excellence in Drawing and the SOM Foundation Fellowships. So this year, the RIBA invited more schools than ever before to take part in this celebration of achievement. A record 340 institutions located in 65 <coughs> countries were invited to nominate dissertations and design projects, and the result was truly outstanding. For months, hundreds of entries arrived, not only from all over the UK, but from schools located in countries such as Australia, China, Colombia, Denmark, India, Italy, Lebanon, Malaysia, Russia, Singapore, South Africa, and South Korea, just to name a few and give you an idea of the global reputation of these awards. Well, this evening also marks the opening of the President's Medals exhibition, which you'll be able to see in the practice space, our gallery up on the second floor of the building. This exhibition is a selection of the outstanding work that we received for this year's awards. And once it closes in London at the end of January 2016, it will tour through the UK and then internationally. Over the past few years, and in collaboration with universities, art galleries, and museums, we've been able to showcase the entries submitted for the President's Medals across the globe. I'm very pleased to announce that we have already confirmed and scheduled venues to display the exhibition over the next few months in countries such as Argentina, Colombia, France, Italy, and India. And I'm delighted to announce more good news. From this year, we'll be inviting the winners of the Sargent Awards for Excellence in Drawing to contribute examples of their work to the RIBA's architectural collections. We hope they accept our invitation to have their drawings placed alongside those produced by leading architects from the 15th century to the present day, while also sharing them with a contemporary audience through Rebapix, our digital library. The work you see tonight, to say the very least, is remarkable. After I reviewed this year's entries, I, I felt a reassuring sense that as demonstrations of talent and hard work, well, the work produced by these young graduates is a strong reminder of the important part that architects can play in creating a better world. Now more than ever, we have reason to celebrate architecture as a creative and rewarding discipline and should see the outstanding award-winning work produced by our colleagues as a reminder of the value that we as architects can bring to society. 
I would encourage you all to see tonight's ceremony not just as a series of well-deserved awards, but as a celebration of the achievement and innovation at all stages of our profession, a path that begins from the moment budding architects cross the thresholds of the schools of architecture on their first day of their first year of part one, and that lasts for the rest of their lives. As we approach the 180th anniversary of the RIBA President's Medals in 2016, a momentous year that I'm truly honored to preside over, it's only fitting that we take pride in our intellectual and creative skills and proudly welcome the inaugural RIBA Research Medal. I believe that research is part of everything we do as architects. It's undeniable that the physical spaces that we begin to create as ideas generated by something that touches our imagination and inspires us. Um, but before we turn our ideas into built realities, we develop thoughts shaped by questioning, investigating, consulting, reflecting, debating, and, and what are these words but synonyms for research? A process so naturally inextricable from the work we do and the professions that we are. Research is ultimately a practice in which we engage every day and that enriches every word of advice which we give each other and share with our clients. In many ways that are so self-evident and second nature to us, we forget it is actually always there. Research is the path in our continuous journey to improve the spaces that surround us and allow better quality of life for all individuals and communities. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the staff in the RIBA education and research departments that made tonight's awards possible. Since I started my presidency in September, not that long ago, I have had the opportunity to find in these teams professionals who are not only committed to supporting architects and architecture, but are also genuine and passionate believers in education. And I finally hope that you enjoy tonight's wonderful celebration of our Institute's rich history of supporting excellence and innovation in architectural education by looking forward to the future with optimism and excitement. Let these medals stand for a symbol of our creative potential and a celebratory reminder of our marvelous ability to transform ideas into realities. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jane. And to introduce the new RIBA Research Medal and join me in announcing the winners of this year's RIBA President's Awards for Research, I would like to invite to the stage the chair of the RIBA Research and Innovation Group, Professor Flora Samuel. Good evening. It's a great honor to be here to announce the winners of the 2015 RIBA Research Awards. As the new chair of the RIBA Research and Innovation Group, it's my first time in this role. So first of all, I must give my profuse thanks to the outgoing chair, Professor Murray Fraser of the Bartlett, for all that he has done in the name of research at the RIBA. The RIBA President's Awards for Research promote research and researchers that contribute important new knowledge and understand into the fields of architecture and architectural practice. Research awards have been given by the RABA in various formats for well over 50 years, but tonight is particularly special as for the first time we are able to award a designated President's Medal for Research. And in doing so, we give much needed recognition to the vital role that research plays in the health and future resilience of our profession and of society more widely. The new medal takes its place in a long history of medal commissioning, selecting and giving at the RABA, RABA, begun by the father of the Institute and former president, Thomas Levit Leviton Donaldson, a keen connoisseur of ar antique architectural coins. Medals were, for Donaldson, bearers of architectural knowledge, an idea affirmed by the new medal, but in a refreshing and forward-looking way this medal, presented in a case and without a ribbon, is designed as an object of meditation, to be explored at once intellectually, through the mind, and physically, 
through touch. In this way, recognizing the importance of different ways of knowing. The brainchild of Anne Dye, head of research and innovation, the design was put out to an open competition, attracting a varied range of designs based on a thoughtful and challenging brief developed by Neil Sersor. The judging team comprised the president and immediate past presidents of the Institute, Professor Ruth Morrow, chair of the Research Awards panel, Charles Hind, chief curator at the RABA, and, and ver as well as various members of RABA staff. We were assisted in the process by Philip Atwood, keeper of coins and medals at the British Museum, an eminent numismatist with great enthusiasm for contemporary design, who taught us what it really takes to make an enduring medal of the highest possible quality. The design of the winning team, wife and husband, medal maker and architect, was clearly a front runner from the start. Together, Nicola Moss and Simon Beeson, who are in the audience, I'm pleased to say, have created a timeless medal of which the RABA could be truly proud. One side of the medal, entitled Earth and Sky, is traversed by a horizon line that cuts across its centre, a threshold between the labyrinth below that makes up the earth and the textures and levels that make up the sky and the sun. The reverse, a powerful reimagining of the Institute crest, shows not two lions facing inwards, as is traditional, but shows instead a lion and a lioness, looking resolutely outwards, united by the apple tree or tree of knowledge that stands between them. <coughs> the new medal will be awarded to the project and its author or authors judged preeminent in the category of research. It acts as an important reminder of the of key role played by research and, we hope, the research awards in the long-term future of our field. Thank you, Flora. Uh, the first of the research awards given for an outstanding master's degree thesis goes to Holding Hands, Touching Alterity, Dance as Spatial Practice at Monte Verita, 1914. This thesis is an account of the self-sustaining anarchist community at Monte Verita set up by the architect movement theorist Rudolf Laban in 1913. It focuses on a series of seven high-definition autochromes, one of which is pictured here, taken by Johann von Meissenbach around the outbreak of the First World War. An attempt to open up alternative histories of spatial practices, the writer draws on feminist and queer critiques of Merleau-Ponty's work on phenomenology. Described by the judging panel as fascinating, compelling, and elegant, it tackles the fundamentals of architecture, body, space, and movement. Supervised by professors Jane Rendell and Barbara Penner at the Bartlett School of Architecture, the award for outstanding master's thesis goes to Christopher Perpera. Uh, we now move on to the second category for doctoral research. And the commendation goes to territories of scarcity and creativity, a critical view on informal settlements and emerging tactics under conditions of scarcity in Nairobi, Kenya, and Quito, Ecuador. Described by the judging panel as completely gripping, the study looks at scarcity not as something quantitatively measured, but as a constructed idea that impacts upon material form and its relationship to scarcity. Thorough and rigorous, the thesis stemmed from concerns with issues affecting the built environment in contem contemporary cities of both the global north and south, including economic crises, accelerated rates of urbanization, and the depletion of resources. Carried out at the University of Westminster, 
supervised by Professor Jeremy Till and John Goodbun, the commendation in the PhD category goes to Isis Paula Nunes Ferreira. And the winner of the category for Outstanding Doctoral Thesis in the President's Award for Research Program goes to Translating the Concept of Sustainability into Architectural Design Practices, London's City Hall as an Exemplar. The thesis focuses on a single case study, London City Hall, to interrogate a recent project demonstrating the causes and effects of architects' design decisions. Extracting remarkable forthrightness from interview subjects about the power struggles between clients, engineers, and architects, the author charts the pyrrhic victory of form over performance that has led to failures in environmental standards. This thesis, supervised by Professor Robert Taverner and Professor Leslie Sclair, was carried out in the LSE Sociology Department Cities Program. And the award is given to Torsten Schroeder. Now, of course, as well as student work, the President's Awards for Research reward excellence in two further categories, university-located and practice-led research. This really matters. The Institute recognizes that research is a lifelong activity for the architect, whether in an academic context or for practical application. And we encourage all winners to follow through their research interests and pursue them to the highest level. Well, no truer could this be than for our next winner, the authors of which won an award for research previously in 2007. Second nature urban agriculture, designing productive cities, poses fundamental questions. What are the architectural and urban design consequences of a sustainable and resilient urban food system? What are the actions that advance and enable coherent integration of productive landscapes within cities? Published in 2014, the thesis consolidates systematic research undertaken over the last decade. The publication will be a valuable reference for any future research on urban food systems and sustainability. So, the RIBA President's Award for Outstanding University-Located Research goes to Katrine Bourne and André Villiers of the School of Art, Design and Media at the University of Brighton. So last, but by no means least, in this special evening for the Research Awards program is the Award for Outstanding Practice-Located Research. Pathways to construction procurement reform leading to adoption and embedding of EU Directive 2004-24-EU sets out to address why procurement processes ostensibly set up to offer a fair and open market were having negative and unsustainable impact on design talent accessing work, constraining opportunity, and incurring excessive time and costs. 
Demonstrating tenacity and commitment, the submission included books, articles, reports, and conference papers showing a comprehensive investigation into the area of procurement reform of increasing the urgent relevance to the profession. The comprehensive nature of this work by the writer and colleagues across the profession asks important questions about procurement and its reform in the wider apparatus of architectural practice. And it is for this reason that the judging panel, peers and colleagues voted Walter Menteth of Walter Menteth Architects as the inaugural recipient of the new research medal. Wow, this proves it's Christmas. Um, and I think this is probably the first medal I've received that uh, isn't filled with chocolate. So it's quite an honor, and I'm um, deeply uh, touched by this. Um, at these occasions, I would like to take the opportunity through the course of this work, which has been identified to you, has been over some considerable period of time, to thank all those colleagues in the profession who have so... Uh, been, been so generous with their support and have in many ways helped to drive it forward. It's an urgently needed uh, uh, issue that we need to, uh, we need to address. Um, and my particular thanks, as I've identified, for Russell and uh, Bridget and uh, Owen O'Carroll, who sadly can't be with us today, from Project Compass, the patrons of Project Compass, and also for the generous support I got from the ROBA uh, in uh, putting money behind what was a really rather a poorly described research proposal uh, at the time, done in rather a rush, the usual story, uh, but they generously agreed to provide some uh, resources that contributed towards it. And in addition to that, the commitment of one of the honorary fellows of the RIBA, uh, who wishes to remain anonymous, who too, but who has also contributed towards the funding of this research program, uh, has been uh, uh, I, we cannot uh, thank her enough. Um, at, on top of that, my university, where I teach part-time two days a week, has uh, put up with many of my foibles for a number of years while I've been doing this and probably uh, not doing enough of my job. Otherwise, uh, I don't think that's quite the case, but I'm underplaying that. Um, but the point I think I would like to really get to you all, uh, to, to you, is that this ball and chain of public procurement has... Uh, been constraining talent in this country now for far too long. It's having significant impacts on our economic growth and it is significantly damaging our profession. We hope that this research that's been put in place will actually give us the foundation to go forward to remove the discrimination in practice that is currently happening. This isn't going to be an immediate process. It will take time to embed and we need to continue working forward on it, and we need to continue working forward in honor, as a profession if we are to see the talents of this country unleashed and unlocked. And that is the way that we can have economic benefit and advance. Now, I came at this as a practitioner 
working in a small practice and decided that it was in fact better than writing innumerable pointless PPQs and wasting the business, uh, the, the, the time of the profession. Instead, I decided to start writing the research. I think it is an excellent idea that practitioners engage in more research because sometimes it is necessary to change the fundamentals of what we are doing. And so I'd like to thank you very much on that note. Thank you, Walter. Thank you, Flora. Thank you, all our uh, winners and commendees. So we now come to our celebration of student work by awarding the President's Medals. At the beginning of each award cycles, we issue a call for entries to schools of architecture in the UK and worldwide, requesting their nominations for the dissertation, bronze and silver medals. After submissions arrive and are prepared for judging, Three independent panels comprising distinguished professionals and academics in the field of architecture and associated creative work gather at the RIBA to select the most outstanding design portfolios and dissertations from the work submitted. Uh, this year, the dissertation medal judging panel was chaired by Dr. Peg Rawls from the Bartlett School of Architecture and included Professor Martin Delbeke from Ghent University Dr. Karen Yashka from the University of Brighton, and Dr. Stephen Walker from the University of Sheffield. These judges read dozens of dissertations over the summer and then met at the ROBA to discuss them and award the dissertation medal and commendations. And this is what judging the 2015 dissertation medal looked like. I was actually really impressed by the breadth and the quality overall. Many of the pieces, I think, had a sort of intelligence or an awareness of a kind of political or a subjectivity that informs thinking about architecture, cities, urbanism, the role of the architect today. And the really great work today shows a kind of intelligence around that, I think. What I really liked about the uh, dissertations is that they managed to marry a kind of very strong personal engagement with a topic that was very clearly, uh, sometimes very close to the heart of the author, with some kind of uh, uh, scientific or academic uh, methodology. It's wonderful to see that students are so into their topic and the intensity that they put into the research and into the writing up and into the illustrations and into the entire kind of piece of work. As a panel, we've been really surprised at you know, very innovative approaches that different students are taking. And we've learned a lot from reading the material that's been put together. It was a genuine breadth and a surprising range of approaches, and that's fantastic. One of the things we've enjoyed, I think, today as a group of judges is the fact that the techniques are both properly architectural and historical, but also might bring in flexions of different cultures. I think it is very important that we get that sense of international representation and also the idea that architecture is really something that happens everywhere in the world. The judging process was very relaxed, very candid. There were very few moments when there was clear disagreement, so that of itself is, I think, significant because uh, it also shows that there is this kind of implicit standards that we all work towards. The strongest ones arrive with an answer that was completely unexpected, but which is absolutely appropriate for you know, the ne needs that have emerged through a more careful process of research and, and discussion. 
I think it's an incredibly powerful statement that the RIBA, as a professional association, values historical and theoretical research in the program. There are skills that are coming through from historical or theoretical research and the point for schools obviously and for the RIBA is to support those and to develop them as creatively and as positively as possible and as diversely as possible. I think it's immensely important that the RIBA awards these medals because it engenders such a process of communication, of sharing, of seeing what other universities, other architectural schools, other students do. It has a whole series of repercussions and, and, and positive influences, I think, within schools um, and in the wider architectural community. I'd now like to invite to the stage RIBA Vice President of Education, Alan Jones, who, together with the RIBA President, will award the commendations and medal in the dissertation category. And the first commendation in this category goes to the dissertation, The Melancholic City of Mirages. And this dissertation analyzes the history and mythology of Baghdad to understand the complex architectural heritage of this post-conflict city with impressive skill and objectivity. This is achieved by binding together the city's historic urban fabric with its mythical and literary heritage in a sensitive and poetic narrative. In addition, the author highlights the necessity of architects having a critical awareness of the complexities of time, identity, and architecture in Baghdad in order to balance realism with utopianism. The dissertation was supervised by Mark Campbell at the Architectural Association. Ladies and gentlemen, the first commendation in the dissertation category goes to Zina Alderi. And the second commendation goes to the dissertation Memories of Farmagusta, recapturing the image of the city through the memories of refugees. Uh, this dissertation reveals the personal, cultural, and spatial memories of the Cypriot town of Farmagusta through the spoken and drawn experiences of its elderly population. While developing a finely drawn portrait of the city through the vivid visual memories of its inhabitants, the dissertation provides a highly engaged approach to oral historiography and the value of primary site-based research. The end result is a beautifully written piece that goes beyond standard interview methodology to suggest a nuanced architectural documentary form. The dissertation, supervised by Karen Yashka and Mark Campbell, was submitted by the University of Brighton. And the author and winner of tonight's second commendation is Irene Klokari. The third commendation in the dissertation category goes to Tempelhof, articulating the void. In this work, the author explores the dynamics and peculiarities of Tempelhofer Feld, a public 386 hectare empty space in the city of Berlin. By examining Tempelhof's specific historical, cultural and material characteristics, the author produces a compelling dissertation engaged with spatial, representational, and site-specific arguments that evidence critical and visually poetic forms of analysis. 
The dissertation was submitted by the University of Sheffield, where it was tutored by Florian Cossack. And the author of the third commendation is Neve Lincoln. Now, the winner of this year's dissertation medal, entitled The Overlooked Back Garden, Voyeurism in the English Back Garden, the medal-winning dissertation is an historical inquiry into the concept of voyeurism, highlighting the conflicts between privacy and curiosity in the overlooked back gardens of English terrace housing. The judges found in this dissertation an imaginative and lively engagement with a very topical discussion. I were particularly impressed by how the author succeeded in analyzing empirical case studies, factual data, and digital mapping technology to generate an original thesis. Most importantly, the judges commended the author's noticeable enjoyment in writing about architecture and its history in urban, spatial, and material forms. Supervised by Harry Charrington, the dissertation was submitted by the University of Westminster. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this year's RIBA dissertation medal is Marie Price. I just wanted to say a few quick words. Um, thank you very much for this medal and for this award. It um, means a lot to me. It's a big personal achievement. Um, so yeah, thank you to the RIBA. And I'd also like to thank the University of Westminster um, for their support throughout my masters, um, in particular to Harry Charrington, my tutor for this dissertation. Um, his invaluable guidance and motivation to do this project and actually enjoy it whilst I was doing it as well and to John Bold for helping me at the end. And then I'd like to thank my family and friends that are here today. Um, my family couldn't make it, but for my friends, they're here. I'm really happy that they're here and they supported me throughout this, so thank you. <laughs> So many congratulations to all our winners in the dissertation category. Now, as part of their support for the President's Medals, the UK Office of Architectural Practice, Skidmore, Owings and Merrill, also awarded the SOM Foundation Fellowships. Selected from this year's entries for the awards and judged by a panel comprising SOM Design Director Kent Jackson, Chris Wilkinson of Wilkinson Air Architects, and Mariana Pastana, Curator of Architecture at the Victorian Albert Museum, the 2014 SOM Foundation Fellowships were awarded to Douglas Miller and Benjamin Ferns, both from the Bartlett School of Architecture. So moving on, we'll now present the winners of this year's Sargent Awards for drawing and the commendations and medals in the bronze and silver categories. To assess design projects, we gathered two separate groups of renowned experts from academia and practice. 
As chair of the bronze medal judging panel, I was joined by Alan Jones, RIBA Vice President of Education and Director of Education Architecture at Queen's University Belfast. By Kate Goodwin, Head of Architecture at the Royal Academy of Arts. Roisin Hennigan of Hennigan Peng Architects. And Chris Thurlborn, Head of the Master's Program at the Aarhus School of Architecture in Denmark and incidentally winner of the 1991 RIBA Silver Medal. And on the silver medal judging panel, Alan and I were joined by Sasha Brodsky, architect, sculptor, and tutor. By Neil McLaughlin of Neil McLaughlin Architects and winner of the 2015 RIBA Stephen Lawrence Prize, and Carme Pinos of Estudio Carme Pinos. After two very long but highly enjoyable days that included detailed viewing of thousands of images and hundreds of statements and portfolios, we agreed on the medal winners and on those who deserve to be commended for outstanding work. Uh, to give you an idea of the judging process, this is what happened on those two days. The work that we saw today is the very, very well-crafted and articulate. There's a fantastic skill that our students have today in graphic representation. All the presentations are very good. Amazing drawings, a lot of work behind each project. No? What did impress me was the rigor of the work. Now that's almost across all of the projects that we saw, all the work. I think I was really blown away by the overall quality and I found that actually looking through those portfolios was really special. I think the enormous advantage in not setting a brief or establishing themes to respond to uh, is that students are completely free to define their own response to the medal submissions. It's a demanding couple of days, but the refreshing thing is that you're never quite clear what might be coming up next, and that is a real joy. I think when you get older and you're in practice, you, you get tied up with all the, the issues to do with just delivering a project and really to have proposals and ideas that are free from that, I think is very important. For a project to be successful in the silver medal, it's got to find a kind of a sweet point between a level of pragmatism and an ability for us to see it as taking its place successfully in the world, and at the same time, some theoretical or intellectual or poetic set of ideas that are overarching. Well, I, I thought it was a very enjoyable process. Um, we come from different disciplines, as we said, or different, different environments, um, but I think we all had that sort of common agenda in trying to find the best work. Everyone had their own distinct response and feeling to them. There was a lot of consensus of so which ones are the projects which we wanted to revisit and look at in more depth. The decision is made, I suppose, in light of a very informed discussion. I think it's very thorough. I think I would be very satisfied that the decision that was made was interrogated very, very closely. The panel, I think, worked really well together. The variety of opinions and so on, but it was a, good, it was a team effort and we came to some very good conclusions. The strength of the RIBA President's Medals is it allows us to see portfolios from different schools internationally. I think that the number of people from 25 countries today subscribing to that makes it an excellent forum for us to see how ideas are being generated around the world. I think it's very, very important to, to give this medal for concept, for fantasy, thinking is one of the most important things in architecture is the theory. I think it's important to continue to acknowledge student ideas because uh, those are, in a way, the ideas of tomorrow. Architecture, really, the foundation of it is in those 
ideas. It can underpin every building, it underpins architectural design. So for me, it is probably the most important thing. We are setting a benchmark for the profession to reflect on its own accomplishments, which can lead to heated debate, difference of opinions and so on. Actually, that's grist to the mill of, of the people in the profession. And uh, competitions such as this, I think, are really helping uh, that process of debate and discourse. So in the bronze medal category, the judges selected the winner of the Sergeant Award for Excellence in Drawing, and also made three commendations presented in alphabetical order by surname. The 2015 Sergeant Award at Part 1 goes to the Lost Dockyard. The Lost Dockyard considers ways to revive Athens Port of Piraeus, which has seen passenger numbers decline drastically. To address this issue, a series of interventions are proposed, including an experiential boat museum and workshop, restaurants and bars. The intention of the proposed spaces is to encourage ferry passengers and locals to enjoy and explore the port while appreciating its heritage and imagery. The project was submitted by Oxford Brookes University, where it was tutored by Ricardo Assis Rosa, Alexandrina Rizova, and the 2010 silver medal winner, Jonathan Schofield. The winner of the award is Andrew Chard. And the first commendation in the bronze medal category goes to the project, the Mnemonic Guild. The project examines and questions the notion of memory by proposing a series of four time capsules as architectural interventions into the existing infrastructure of the Elephant and Castle area of London. Each capsule is based on a period of local history, such as World War II bombing and post-war rebuilding. And together, they form the Mnemonic Guild, a vessel monument and experience for showcasing and interpreting the past. The project was tutored by Alastair Russell, Chris McCurtain and Stuart Buckingham at the University of Nottingham and the author is Sophie Barks. The second commendation in this category goes to a project submitted by Nanjing University in China with the title Academic Landscape, Regenerate a Riverside Warehouse as an Emblem of Active Learning. So this project studies the typology of reading spaces such as university, college and faculty libraries and analyzes different users' reading behaviors. It then proposes the regeneration of a warehouse on the River Cam into a learning place for both students and the inhabitants of Cambridge. Positioned in one of the town's most crowded areas for tourists, the building becomes a key part of the waterside landscape by addressing international visitors as well as town and gown. The project was tutored by Ping Ping Du and Ingrid Schroeder. And we are delighted that the winner of this commendation traveled from China to be with us tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the second commendation in the bronze category is Hong Ji. This year, the judging panel decided to award a high commendation to the project, the San Francisco Columbarium. Tutored by Pascal Bronner and Thomas Hillier at the Bartlett School of Architecture, the project explores ways of ex 
preserving San Francisco's old residential landscapes of architectural heritage, whilst simultaneously accommodating the city's expansion. The solution proposed saving the city's painted ladies' houses from demolition, relocating them to Alamo Square Park, where they are incorporated into a subterranean museum. The result is the creation of a dreamlike neighborhood of a lost San Francisco that the author illustrates in a series of exquisite drawings. The winner of this high commendation is Douglas Miller. So now to the bronze medal awarded to the best design project produced during RIBA part one or its equivalent in a school of architecture located in any one of the 65 countries invited to take part in the awards. The winning project is entitled Space as the Third Teacher, an alternative classroom typology promoting creative learning and play. The project explores the notion of flexibility in classroom design, concluding that ambiguous, open-ended spaces rather than wholly inflexible rooms provide the best learning environments. As part of his research, the author visited schools in Amsterdam and Rotterdam, designed by Hermann Hertzberger, and drew on his own experiences at school in Malaysia, where classroom partition walls were open to form wider or narrower spaces as required. The solution proposed is the creation of inside-out classrooms, modeled on Montessori teaching, where shelves are wrapped around the exterior of the classroom rather than the inside. This is presented in the form of a storybook that illustrates the successive spaces encountered by children throughout the school day. The project was submitted by the Bartlett School of Architecture, where it was tutored by Rhys Cannon and Colin Herperger. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the 2015 RIBA President's Bronze Medal is Boon Yik Chun. Good evening, everyone. I prepared my script, but I didn't prepare to, prepare to shake like this. Um, um, first of all, thank you, judges, for your recognition. I'm truly honored. This award will certainly encourage me to take bolder and broader step in doing what I deeply believe in. I would like to take this opportunity to thank my scholarship sponsor for making university education possible, tutors in the Bartlett, who have honored me with your heterodox support that has led on to the nomination of this project. Undergraduate um, program leader, Matthew and Molly for your generous support and guidance. Project tutors, Rhys, Colin and Scott for your patience and tolerance towards my obstinate stubbornness. And also apology for the times I had attitude. A grateful remark to Mr. Sean Griffiths for his um, reassuring encouragement in my excellent examination to continue to be daring in architecture when I was really disappointed and frustrated, um, failing to fit into a particular school of thought and have almost given up. I would also like to express gratitude to Achilles, Iman, Yang Yang, and Clarence for your kind assistance. And many thanks to um, Pascal and Tom, Tony, Nicholas, Ernest, Nick. Nicole, Nicola, PQ, Francesca, Isabel, Xiao Cheng, Gawa, and Khalid in math, um, who also include uh, Marie. Um, sorry that I'm pressed for time. I will express my love in person to the person in the, leaf, uh, in the list. Last but not least, I would like to thank my family for unconditional love. Thank you very much.
Congratulations to our part one winners. We now move to the announcement of the silver medal winners, starting with the Sergeant Award for drawing at part two. The judges agreed that the part two entry with the best architectural drawings was Pontifical Academy of Sciences. The project reinterprets the original Pontifical Academy of Sciences, established in 1603 with Galileo as its chair, from an allegorical viewpoint by relocating it to the city of London and providing a new educational system tackling the square mile's lack of moral purpose. The author explores the playfulness of the theme in highly accomplished drawings where the libraries and lecture spaces of the academy are imagined in a monochrome, reimagined in a monochrome color palette offsetting the red and gold of the papal robes. The project was tutored by Matthew Butcher, Elizabeth Dow, and Jonathan Hill at the Bartlett School of Architecture. The author, a winner once again this evening, is Benjamin Ferns. In the silver medal category, the judges awarded two commendations and one high commendation. The first commended project at part two is called Restoring the Workhouse, an alternative conservation strategy. The project proposes a radical conservation strategy for Budley Workhouse in Worcestershire that, rather than preserving its grade two listing as a heritage asset, considers the potential to adapt and accommodate changing needs. By reprioritizing material and flow over form, the scale, character, and configuration of the original workhouse is retained, and new narratives created, defining the past and present architectural spaces. The author was tutored by Kate Darby at Cardiff University, and her name is Gemma Wheeler. The second commendation goes to the project Lofferton Seasonal Fishery, submitted by De Montfort University, where it was tutored by Tim Barwell. The project's aim is to rejuvenate the lives of individuals and communities in Norway's Lofton Islands, whose values and cultural identity have been badly affected as a result of the demise of the local fishing industry. The author proposes the creation of facilities for lo local fishermen to catch, process, and sell their own products, whose design references Lofton's vernacular architecture and reappropriates the community's cultural heritage. The winner of the commendation is Alastair Wood. silver medal category, the judges also awarded a high commendation, and this was to the project Chlorophyllus Urbanism, Mumbai. This ambitious project sets out to create a new strategy for architectural intervention in the Indian city of Mumbai after careful analysis of six sites alongside Mumbai's Thane Creek coastline. The proposal suggests a delicate redress of the consequences of colonialism by exploring ecological, social, and political approaches as part of an imagined urban plan. Tutored by Dorian Wisniewski at the Edinburgh School of Architecture and Landscape Architecture, the project was submitted as a joint nomination by Marshall English and Marcus Rothney. Sadly, Marshall was not able to attend tonight's ceremony, but we are delighted to welcome Marcus to the stage to receive the award on behalf of the two.
So, finally, this year's RIBA silver medal for best design project at RIBA part two or equivalent worldwide. Nominated by the Macintosh School of Architecture and tutored by Robert Mantho, the winning project is entitled The Heteroglossic City, a polemic against critical reconstruction in Berlin. The project investigates the historical background of Berlin's highly controlled planning system before setting out a new strategy for architectural intervention. This is illustrated through the Bau Forum, a platform that explores a more dialogue-focused approach to planning context and embodies a new strategic attitude to urban development in Berlin. Featuring public facilities, including a gallery, library, and free studio spaces intended to house autonomous urban development initiatives, the Bau Forum also includes areas to enable debates, presentations, and exhibitions. The result is a proposal for an effective, adaptive metropolis of open source urbanism, driven by participation and democracy rather than economics and bureaucracy. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating and welcoming to the stage the winner of the 2015 RIBA Silver Medal, Finn Wilkie. Um, well, this is great and uh, very unexpected. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the REBA and the judges for recognising my work. Um, also, the Macintosh School of Architecture, and in particular, my tutor, Robert Mantho, um, uh, Scott Hayworth and Sergei Kolosov for their assistance during the project. Uh, and finally, and mostly, my family, my grand granddad, my dad, my mum, Mary, my wee sister, Sarah, and my girlfriend, Victoria. Thank you. My congratulations to all of our winners, aren't they fantastic? I'm absolutely bowled over. This was, without doubt, a great night celebrating outstanding talent across the spectrum of architectural education. I'm sure you'll agree that the future of architecture is assured in the hands of such extremely talented young men and women. Well, now I hope that you continue to enjoy tonight's celebration by joining us upstairs for drinks in the Florence Hall on the first floor. And don't forget to visit the exhibition and do help yourselves to a complimentary copy of an exclusive supplement featuring this year's winners produced in association with the RIBA Journal. Thank you very much for coming, all of you, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Thank you.